What's going on, everyone? If you're listening to this, then you are the master of your reality. I am the master of my reality, and I just want to give you all a quick update on some important levels to consider for the 5.3 rule. Um, if you're not aware of the 5.3 rule, please check out my previous videos on this. This rule is still in play and has been in play since the inception of Bitcoin, allowing us to predict the cycle tops for Bitcoin each cycle within a average range of 5% discrepancy. So that means we have 95% accuracy essentially predicting each cycle top for Bitcoin using this 5.3 rule. Essentially what's going on is the rate of return for Bitcoin is diminishing at a rate of 5.3. It's Fibonacci sequence, um, simply the rate of which Bitcoin's gains are contracting. So again, if you're not familiar with this, please go check out my previous videos on it. I go very in-depth on the 5.3 rule. Um, but I just wanted to give you all a quick update to things to look out for, some price levels to look out for in the coming weeks and months ahead, as well as talk about uh, what when at what point will the 5.3 rule be invalidated if bitcoin is to continue going higher which i don't see happening i don't see bitcoin going to a hundred thousand plus um that's not what this this rule is telling us and to me this is the single most strongest piece of technical analysis that we can see in bitcoin's the entire history of bitcoin's chart so let's get into it uh, i wanted to give you all these levels so real quick um i updated this chart here to give you a more accurate depiction of the the possible range of price targets for this cycle top and as you can see we have already entered that range and got rejected so on the low end we have and basically how i got this is you take the previous cycles gains from bottom to top you take that number 2097 uh, and you divide that by 5.3 and that gives you uh we should expect around 400 percent gains for this cycle the number is 395 so i measure from the bottom here Let's see if we can get it right there around 15,000. We measure up about right there is 395% gain. Okay. And then, so what I did to get this range here. So the average discrepancy uh, for this 5.3 rule is 5%. So that means that, um, well, I'll just tell you in the first two cycles, I believe the discrepancy was around three to 4% to the upside. So that means that Bitcoin actually achieved um, a price that was 3% higher, 3 to 4% higher than what the 5.3 rule predicted. So the first two um, times it was higher. The last cycle, this, this previous cycle, 2017 to 21, uh, we actually, it was 8% lower. Um, so that was the first cycle where we actually got a lower top than what the 5.3 rule predicted. So keep that in mind. Um, and then if you average up all those numbers, you get an average of 5% uh, discrepancy. So um, taking that, I actually, I actually, uh, I gave, you know, Bitcoin the benefit of the doubt. So I did uh, 395% that gives you a price uh, very close to 77,000 and that's exactly what the 5.3 rule is predicting $77,000 per Bitcoin this cycle top okay so I measured uh, 8% just giving it the benefit of doubt that was the biggest discrepancy we saw so I did 8% to the upside and 8% to the downside from 77k uh, so our high end discrepancy is 83,000. So if Bitcoin was to return to this zone, start making new all time highs once again, and we see the price break above 83,000, uh, well, that will be the first time ever that, that Bitcoin has 
had more than a five percent dis or sorry an eight percent discrepancy than what the five point three rule predicted. It will be the first time ever that it has had more than a five percent uh, discrepancy to the upside because the only time we got that eight percent discrepancy, it, Bitcoin actually went lower. The cycle top was eight percent lower than what the five point three rule predicted. So hopefully you guys caught all that. Um, the low end discrepancy again eight percent. Uh, down from 77,000 gives us around 73,000. Um, and keep in mind, guys, your, your numbers might be a little off depending on what chart you are using. This is the Bitcoin crypto chart. Um, so if you're using like an exchange chart, you might have different numbers. I tried as close as I can to get all these measurements pulled from the exact number on the wick. So you might get a, a 5.3 rule gain for this cycle around 398, maybe a little less, maybe around 380, but it should be around uh, 395, around 400, close to 400. So that is our low end discrepancy, 73,000, and we have already broken above that. As you can see, our current all time high for this cycle is 73,805. According to this, again, this chart might be a different number on your chart, but it should be around the same. You should be getting in the ballpark same number measurements as I have if you're measuring this yourself, which I recommend. So the top could be in, right? that's what I'm getting at. Um, the top could be in. And so we're going to explore, you know, kind of these levels to expect uh, we could retrace back to. But keep in mind that, you know, if we start going above 83,000, that makes this, the, the chances of this 5.3 rule, um, you know, working again, this cycle, like it has every other cycle that makes that uh, the chances of that less likely and even though it has worked you know almost to the t in all previous cycles i'm not saying like yeah it's going to work again because bitcoin is doing things it has done it has never done before this cycle that it, it's never done before in previous cycles um, like this double top you know like uh we haven't had a, a any correction really bigger than 20 percent yet and it's made a new all-time high before the halving uh, that has never happened before either. So there's a few things going on a little different. You know, we got the ETFs. I don't really consider the ETFs to have a significant impact on the price of Bitcoin, considering it's only around 4% of the supply in the ETFs. Um, but let's check out this other chart I have real quick. I think I covered everything I wanted to on this chart. Oh, this trend line right here. Um, so I did adjust this trend line going from that wick to really this wick here. But I mean, you know, trend lines, you, you can pull trend lines in a variety of different ways. This is just one way to do it, um, correlating that the top is in. Uh, so just wanted to touch on that. But let's move on to this chart I have here. Uh, this is the daily chart now. This is a uh, bit stamp chart uh, still has very good data okay guys so check this out I just dropped this horizontal trend line here and we are on the two month chart so you can see this this level here around 61,500 you know maybe 62,000 uh, that really was our previous resistance on the two month chart going back to 2021 uh, we never closed a daily or sorry a two-month candle higher than 62,000 this is a very bearish candle that we've just recently printed on the two-month chart all right you can see this is a, I think some people call this a gravestone candle I'm talking about this red one right here but a big wick to the upside and then we close this monthly this bi-monthly candle below our 62k resistance and there is almost two whole months left in this candle so this candle could very well close below this uh, 62k trend line all right but let's zoom in now all the way to the daily chart and I want to point out some the, the next 
critical level for Bitcoin. So obviously to the upside, we have our $83,000 5.3 anomaly. Um, that would make the 5.3 rule less valid, less uh, give it less weight in my view. If we do breach 83,000, and then let's just quickly go over what would invalidate the 5.3 rule. All right, so Bitcoin's right at you know 64k right now. Uh, we did get a bounce off this this trading, uh, this channel, uh, which we will talk about in a moment is very important. But again, I have, if we go to the line chart, so I pulled this trend line from the top of these lines. So I would say that the 5.3 rule is invalid if we start closing weekly candles above this trend line. I would go ahead and say, and that's uh, that's still under 100K, but this trend line is, I think, somewhat important. You know, this is the same trend line that you can pull a little lower and, and confirm that we have our top already in. So this is just the, the, the triple top. You know, this is just a less conservative way to to pull it with at the, the peaks of these these peaks here, you know, the top of these peaks on the line chart. Uh, that gives us the trend line sitting uh, closer to 90,000. You know, we could uh, break above this, especially if we break above this trend line and then come back to retest it and we flip this and hold this trend line as support then then i would say yeah it's very likely we're going to 100k plus you know and then we maybe could see like 150k plus bitcoin okay the 1.618 is right around 174k so that is possible um but i mean guys even if you got in at the bottom even if you bought if your average price for bitcoin is 15k that's only a thousand percent move yeah i know that's <laughs> i'm saying only a thousand percent move but in the world of crypto that's not a whole lot when you compare to other stuff some of the altcoins that i'm investing in have you know potentials of ten thousand percent moves you know hundred hundred x's thousand x's some of them so if you want to check out the altcoins that I'm personally invested in that have real utility, there will be a link to join the free Discord community where I have my portfolio distribution, all the, the coins I'm investing in. Uh, that's all that all that information is in there. So it is free to join until we hit a thousand subscribers. So make sure you're subscribed and then secure your free spot in the Discord while it is still free so anyway back to the chart here so let me change this back to our candles as you can see we almost back tested this this channel but as i say with uh with these trend lines with these channels anything that you're pulling diagonally you know give some leeway so i'd go ahead and consider that back tested but this is this channel is critical to hold this blue channel right here this is going to be what we need to hold and if we start breaking through this channel i would suspect a 44k bitcoin um, and the reason is because all previous cycles, Bitcoin can do anywhere from 40 to like 80% corrections mid cycle. And yes, that's true. And, uh, and I believe it was like 2015 or 2016, uh, around when, whenever Mt. Gox might've been 2014, it was when Mt. Gox suspended trading because they determined that the market needed to cool off <laughs> so they just said all right we're gonna stop trading and bitcoin corrected like 80 percent after they did it and that was during a bull run uh and then it you know continued up to whatever the new high was but regardless um we haven't even had more than like a 25 percent correction yet since the low since 15k and i'll show you all that right here uh right here that was a 22 percent correction that was a 20 percent correction 21 percent correction here to here that was only a 20 percent correction and so far from our current cycle top 
uh, we've only corrected like 23%. So this has been the biggest correction we've had so far, but still 20% is nothing. <laughs> is nothing. Um, you know, and if we can get a 40% correction, which would make a lot more sense with what we see in previous cycles, that would bring us uh, right back around to the middle of the emerald zone between the point. 618 and the 0.786 fib uh, levels uh, so that would make a lot of sense to me if we see 44k bitcoin after we break this uh this blue channel remember this channel is very critical as you can see we were treating it as support there 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 we flip below it and then it we traded within this channel uh, very tightly uh, very nicely within that channel and we broke above it treated it as support one more time below it before treating it as resistance for a little bit and then we that's when we had our just insane uh, unsustainable rally up to 74 almost 74,000 so holding this trend line is very important if we do start breaking below and closing daily candles within or below this trend line you know there is some support uh, around you know 52 50 to 52 K I'd say is a good range but not a whole lot and that would only still be uh, to 51 K still 30 percent correction uh, we could very easily easily see 40 percent correction down to 44 K keep that in mind um, if we do lose the 44k level all right now now we're just now we're exploring the idea that the top is in for bitcoin and you know how how if the top's in well then we only have downside to go so how low can we go well let's touch on the the levels how low can we go and then i'll give you all my what i see happening to bitcoin you know what what could possibly happen to bitcoin if we're not going 100k plus um, and kind of the narratives that could surround that. So let's say we lose 44K and we go lower. Well, if we, you know, break below that, there's not a whole lot of support uh, from 44,000 to the next major support range, which is from 30,000, sorry, 31,000 to 34. All right, here you do have lots of support especially right here this was our resistance for a while same thing back here so there's definitely uh you know this is like your support cloud 31 to 34k keep those numbers in mind now if we lose those if we lose that support then our next major level uh would either be the 0.382 around 27,000 but you're really, really the next main level is 25K. And you can see that that's a critical, critical level, guys. You know, it was our resistance right here, resistance right here, broke above it, support, support. Okay, so, and, and this was a long trading period. So 25K is a critical level for Bitcoin. I don't know how, I, how much more critical I can make that sound but if we do see that oh and by the way if we cannot hold 44k then i would say that this current top being in that would that would be a big confirmation for me that that this 5.3 rule did accurately predict this cycle top you know from in the range that that we disclosed and then that would be your top around 73800 so yeah, uh, and and then you know obviously once we break forty four, if we break forty four, if we break this blue channel, obviously, then uh, then the question is how low do we go and what is the narrative going to be? So twenty five k is obviously a critical level. If we break that level, the next support range is around twenty two, and that is perfectly in alignment with the two three six fib twenty two k. Yeah, if we break that, you can see that's not good. That's really not good. The next major support range is around 18,000. If we break 18,000, I don't see Bitcoin going to zero uh, per se. Uh, I don't think that's really possible considering there's like some Bitcoin lost uh, in wallets. And, you know, some people are going to hold on to it. 
Um, I don't even really feel that strong about it breaking its its 15k low. What we could see is just kind of a range, uh, kind of like a missed cycle for Bitcoin. And what could happen is, you know, eventually maybe maybe the Bitcoin community might come to their senses and agree on some type of uh, upgrade to the consensus mechanism, one that doesn't consume as much electricity, one that's faster, cheaper, maybe, you know, or it'll just get put on XRP. That's also a possibility. But, you know, the only way that I could really see Bitcoin going to, say, zero or actually just completely going away is if there was a 51% attack on the network, which is possible. All right. Only two miners control more than 51% of the supply. So, you know, I mean, that's uh, it's in the cards. Um, very unlikely, very difficult to achieve, but you know that's something you got to consider. They could change the code in whatever the way they want, so they could, you know, double the supply from 21 million to 42. Uh, that wouldn't be good. They could, you know, they could probably just delete the entire ledger. Uh, I'm sure that wouldn't be outside of the realm of possibilities within a 51% attack. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. Very unlikely, but possible. You know, kind of what I see could possibly happen is basically just a a sell off people leaving Bitcoin and the more speculative um, altcoins that will probably have even more violent and extreme corrections than Bitcoin. If this is the top, I do think it is possible to see a, a utility run while we're seeing the speculative the fraudulent market sell off all right and i know that's probably a very unpopular thing to say uh and but it only makes sense if we we have this this massive transfer of wealth essentially um out of this debt market this fraudulent market into uh the future you know financial system which will be based around crypto and precious metals i have Tons of videos explaining that. Check out the How to Prepare for 2024 Master the Great Reset series. Basically what we could see is a, a tsunami of money coming out of the old system, which is built around debt, speculation, easy money, manipulation, lots of shady activity. We could see that system collapse and a new system emerge out of the ashes of that old system. And that could happen at the same time, which would take a lot of people off guard. Um, people who are not positioned in the new system already would FOMO in uh, to these utility tokens. Uh, that's kind of where, you know, what we might see. And so what will happen to Bitcoin? You know, I'm not sure. Um, I know it's possible for Bitcoin to basically get tokenized on XRP, uh, essentially like wrapped Bitcoin on uh, XRP tokenized Bitcoin, whether that's through Flare or some other way, maybe Corium. Either way, XRP could solve the problem of speed and, and scalability for Bitcoin. And, and that way you could still have Bitcoin being a store of value. But by then, the realizations have already been made of what the winners of this market are. And uh, that's all this is, guys. It's just realizations. It, it, <laughs> it's just like layers in an onion of consciousness, you know? And you're, some people have peeled back more layers of the onion to really see what's underneath it all. And when you keep peeling back the layers of Bitcoin, you know, it's not a pretty onion. <laughs> so, um, but again, so we'll just have to see how this plays out and how Bitcoin reacts with this blue trend line. Again, um, you know, th this 5.3 rule could be invalidated if we, you know, start getting above 83K and then this trend line here. So I'll keep you all updated, whatever happens. But uh, if we do somehow break below eighteen thousand, I don't even, I don't even really think that 
fifteen k is a good support because twenty thousand really was the the last support from the bull run, the last bull run. Oh yeah, that was the other thing that Bitcoin never did before. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that Bitcoin in all previous cycles never broke below the prior all time high, and we did that right here actually pretty early in the bear market. So yeah, look guys, um, here's your first cycle high. All right, the the next cycle high we go there, but then the low for this bear market we never broke below that high. All right, same thing with the the last cycle. The low we got never broke below the previous high. So this low broke below twenty thousand the last high. You know, pretty early in the bear market. So just one more thing. Uh, one more data point to point out that we are doing things that Bitcoin has never done before. We are in uncharted waters. And to say that Bitcoin's going to just keep going up and up, you know, when it when the fundamentals, there are no fundamentals for Bitcoin. Um, you know, that's irresponsible investment decisions, in my opinion. All right. You know, none of this is financial advice. I mean, I'm just sharing with y'all what I see in the markets. You know, there's a great quote, uh, what, Raul, Raul Paul, I believe, don't F this up. You know, this is not something to be just following other YouTubers advice about. Okay. This is only going to happen once, guys. This is the greatest transformation of human wealth the world has ever witnessed and the biggest opportunity to radically improve one's life, you know, in a, in a short amount of time that won't happen again, you know. And what I'm talking about, the greatest transfer of wealth, I'm literally talking about value coming onto blockchain. Everything's going to get tokenized and, and we're going to have a new tokenized economy and you're going to need payment rails within that economy, which is going to be XRP, XLM. We already know this. All right. So the, the system's already ready. It's already built. ISO 222, Basel 3, right? You know, they, they've, they are ready. And now I think we're just waiting on kind of the natural progression of things, uh, you know, maybe some more cracks in the pot of liquidity in this uh, current financial system that, you know, it's going to it's going to come pouring in to the utility tokens. All right. The tokens that actually solve a problem, not Dogecoin, not Bitcoin, you know, probably not Ethereum. Those guys are probably all going to jail. <laughs> Uh, but no, in all seriousness though, don't F this up. Do your own research. Okay, please. If, if I am saying things in this video that you have never heard before, please do your own research to try to figure out if you believe what I'm saying is true, because there's so many YouTubers out there, you know, this YouTube is not research guys. You know, read the white papers, look at the team, look at the the fundamentals, the network, you know, consensus mechanisms, all this stuff that is, you know, not fun to look at. It's not mean coin, 10,000 dog with hat, green candles, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm being a little more stern, I guess, more serious in this video out of love, man. Like, I want you guys to kill it in this bull market like me and my community is going to kill it. I want y'all to achieve the highest level abundance and prosperity that you can within your paradigm. That's all I wish for you. I wish for you to become the best master of your reality that you can. And in 25, 30 years from now, when you have your own kids, when you have maybe grandkids, and they say, you know, like, what were you doing this during this time? Gee, daddy, gee, grandpa, what were you doing? And you won't have to say, oh, man, I was in, I was in Shiba Inu, man. I was in Pepe. Uh, I got rugged, man. It went to zero. And then I FOMO'd in the XRP at 20 bucks, you know. Don't be that guy. You know, do the research. Do the, the, use discernment is what I'm trying to say. 
um, so that you can tell you can you know as you and your your kids and your grandkids are looking out over your beautiful 50 acre 100 acre plus ranch or sailing on your your boat or whatever you know whatever you envision for your future you can tell them I was putting in the work I was sacrificing time my energy my attention to try to grasp what was going on and I did the best I could to invest in what I saw the future to look like that's what I'm gonna be telling my kids and my grandkids they're gonna be like how did you how did you buy XRP below a dollar <laughs> how did you know <laughs> Man, I use the I use the technology to my advantage, man. I use the internet instead of letting it use me. That's what I did, man. But all right, I think that's I think that's enough <laughs> for this video. So yeah, summary, uh 5.3 rule is invalidated, not invalidated, just much less valid. Uh it's an anomaly if we break 83k. Um if we break this blue trading range, which is very possible. The next range, next support we have forty four thousand, and you know this could this could happen within this month. Remember the ISO two hundred twenty two deadline that all financial institutions will have to be running ISO two hundred twenty two full fledged for payments is November of twenty twenty five. Okay, that is also let's see the Basel three requirements that implementation gets. Uh, implemented in June or July of 2025, I believe. So the way I see this is that by the time those dates come around, you know, into summer and fall of next year, 2025, it's, you know, it, it's going to be too late to invest in the things that are going to run that new system. So between now and then, we could still have a uh, correction in, you know, like XRP, for example. Um, we could have some jarring uh, fear event on the world stage or whatever, you know, liquidity crisis, whatever happens. Whatever happens, our, our support range for XRP is 30 to 33 cents. All right, that's, you know, the 1.618 on this bearish fib. We've been doing Wyckoff inversely perfectly here. You know, that gives us a 1.618 target. 31 cents. So I do have limit orders anywhere from, you know, 30 to 34 cents for XRP. You know, I've also been taking advantages of these recent pullbacks because this trend line right here is critical. Uh, this support line, all right, it's going to shake a lot of people out if we break this trend line. You know, I, I kind of feel like the, the XRP community is on a very thin Thin line right now the ones have, who, who don't know what they hold you know if we were to break this trend line then man I think we would see a lot of people f you know f getting out uh, just to say and so I'm gonna be there to to buy their their cheap XRP but you know I'm, I'm already positioned guys like I've been I've been accumulating this thing since it was at 70 cents 73 cents I think I bought my first XRP like somewhere around here, 73 cents. And during this whole time, I've been accumulating. So for me, if we get one last sweep to the downside, that'll be a blessing just to lower my dollar cost average. You know, it's just kind of like a last minute accumulation opportunity. Uh, because if we do go down here, I, you know, we could be, we could wick down to 30 cents and get bought back above this trend line in the same week, guys. That's how this thing moves. It does not mess around. Neither should you. So I'm gonna end it here. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate everyone watching. I hope I gave y'all some valuable information in this video. I hope I motivated you to, you know, take action and take accountability, take responsibility for the time that we are in. Uh, because make no mistake, we are in the greatest opportunity of all time that 99% of people will miss. So, you know, be the 1%, be the master of your reality. And with that said,
thank you so much for watching. I really do love and appreciate every single one of you. And I wish nothing but love and abundance for each of you. Until next time, master your reality.